Nothing like a good old corpse fucking to make the sun shine a little brighter this summer. So thank God we have Necromantic, a movie so ambitious it spells its title with a K. Necromantic is a 1987 German film by director Jorg Buttgeret. It's a movie so controversial that a Japanese release of the film was cut so short it was blended into the film's sequel, Necromantic 2, to make one long film. Thank God I have the uncut version of this film. Lord knows I need to see every possible way you could stick your dick into a fucking corpse. Uh-oh, you know it's gonna be nasty when it has a shaky warning label in front of it. Warning, some of this film may be seen as grossly offensive, okay? As if I really needed a warning at the beginning of this thing. It's called Necromantic, for Christ's sake, and the box cover shows a naked woman doing the Humpties with Skeletor. I think I know what I'm getting into. And yet, I'm still watching it. Hey, there's a quote, too. That's a good sign. Usually movies that want to be taken seriously start out with a quote. But then it cuts to someone taking a piss. Better watch out, Jorg. That's Andreas Schnass's trademark. The dialogue here is all in German, and I don't know. This is another one where the subtitles don't quite seem right. <laughs> Who on earth put those silly subtitles there? The couple gets in a fatal car accident. A really, really fatal car accident. But I'm calling bullshit on this damage. We never saw a train, so I'm guessing they just hit that railing. Buford T. Justice could survive this crash while sleeping at the wheel. Nice cameo by the salesman from Beware Children at Play, by the way. Ugh, even the rearview mirror bled to death. The cleanup crew is sent in to take care of the mess, but first, they're hilariously trying to pretend they're in a moving car. Uh, I don't know if this is a good place to set up camp for the night, guys. There's plenty of meat, but the smell is gonna get unbearable. But maybe not for our main character, Rob, who... Well, you'll see in a bit. Was that supposed to mean something? Oh, it means Joe's... Sava... Sava... Joe's Crab Shack. Which, by the way, comes with a fantastic urinal. Because why else would we see two piss takes in the first 15 minutes? If only all the actors had a urinary tract infection, this movie would be a lot shorter. Rob comes home from a hard day of being Steve Rogers. He lives with his girlfriend in the opening credit sequence to Batteries Not Included. He also has a habit of collecting random body parts from his crime scenes. We've got eyeballs, a heart, a fetus, uh, looks like a hand, another eyeball, another eyeball. God damn, do you have enough eyeballs? You're wasting your jars. I guess he could collect worse things, like pogs. This is Rob's girlfriend, Betty, and wait, he has a hot girlfriend? Now this movie is really getting into fantasy. Betty spends most of her time taking hot baths and pools of... Ew. God, maybe if I make it black and white, it'll look better. Ah, <laughs> okay, that actually makes it look more disgusting. Best leave her alone, though. She's washing the Helena Bonham Carter off of her. Rob mostly hangs out in his room with a sweet Steve Railsback photo on the wall and listens to the news. Ohne spekulieren zu wollen, kann man doch annehmen, dass solche Reaktionen auch bei ganz anderen menschlichen Aversionen wie gegen Schmutz. For some reason, this news footage causes Rob to envision a scene with a rabbit. 
And I really don't feel the need to explain what happens to the rabbit. Because you know what happens to it. Oh yeah, and nice bed. If it's good enough for chickens, it's good enough for a guy who would most likely fuck a chicken. Rather abruptly, we cut to Biff Tannen playing with his new pellet gun while his neighbor picks apples. <laughs> Tragic, but think of how much more damage it would have caused if it actually shot something out of it. Biff's gotta hurry up and take care of this situation, so he conveniently drops the body off at the plot. The guys find the body in the swamp, and Lord knows how much time has passed between that last scene and this scene, because the body is now a skeleton. Ciao, Leute. Hi, Abend. Ah, Rob, du bringst ihn hier noch weg, ja? Turns out Rob is a hopeless romantic, with a K, and steals the body so he can take it home to Betty. Oh, don't do that. You need that eyeball to make soup for Pancot Palace. Okay, we all know that Rob and Betty are going to have sex with the corpse. But what you may be wondering is how that is possible if the corpse's dick is rotted away. Oh, that's easy, because his dick is quickly replaced with a pipe. What? You know, I'm all for safe sex, but these two deserve whatever disease they would get. What follows is the notorious post-mortem menage a trois. And I gotta say, the music is incredibly beautiful. fucking confuses me when a movie's music could either go with a nature documentary or a scene with two people fucking a corpse. Maybe if I just close my eyes, I could imagine something that's much, much, much more beautiful than this movie. Not even that is working for me anymore. What's with these hauntingly moving exploitation themes? It really confuses me. Just be grateful that I can't show you everything in that scene. Well, maybe just this. You're welcome. With the fucking music playing, it's amazing how erotic this scene would be if the corpse wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really, really erotic. But the best part of fucking a corpse is the dinner afterwards. That's where you really get to eat out your lover. Rob and Betty decide to keep the corpse around, and isn't that lovely? He's been nailed twice in the same day. The ecstasy doesn't last forever, though, when Rob returns to work the next day and receives complaints from his co-workers. <laughs> After those complaints, Rob is promptly fired by his boss. Sehen Sie, ich muss mich auf das Urteil meines Vorarbeiters. Gehen Sie runter, holen Sie Ihre Papiere. Betty, however, is having a much better day as she reads poetry to the corpse. Ich habe dich vom ersten Tag an geliebt, Hans. Aber ich habe niemals gehofft, dass du auch mich lieben könntest. Rob explains to Betty why he was fired, and being in a relationship with a necrophile is one thing, but being in a relationship with a jobless necrophile, that's completely different. Sitz da wie ein nasser Sack. Genau das hast du garantiert auch vor deinem Chef gestanden. Ich wette. Ist da gestanden und auf deine Füße gestanden und nichts gesagt. Betty leaves Rob and can't even break up with him to his face, so she writes him a note. Die besten Jahre meines Lebens opfern will, 
unserem Freund habe ich als letztes... She even does the worst possible thing imaginable. She takes the corpse. Ooh, think of how many Oscars Kramer vs. Kramer wouldn't have won if it was about a corpse. Rob then tries to manage his life without Betty, without his job, and without his skeleton. He gets a cat who he feeds a heart to. Uh, symbolism? I guess anything that involves a heart has to be symbolic of something. He even tries bathing in guts. Huh, on second thought, my ex-girlfriend was really weird. When that doesn't work, he goes out to see a movie. Fucking day for night shot. And she's wearing a white dress. You don't have to shoot day for night. We'd see her outfit regardless. Wait, why am I reviewing the fake movie within the movie? Looks like 80s cinema snob is already reviewing the movie for me. I recognize this scene. It's a shot used in all the trailers. Nice that they advertise the movie with scenes that aren't even part of the actual story. But Winona Ryder and Kevin Nealon here seem to be enjoying it. Rob decides to leave, but he best be careful because... Uh... Werewolves? Er... Ghost Rider? Finally, at his wit's end, he tries overdosing on Dr. Mario and dreams of... I don't know, finding a severed ear in the grass and then investigating it? Hmm... I can feel this movie getting artsy. I like where this is going. Wow, that's actually better makeup than Batman Forever and Masters of the Universe combined. Color me impressed. A mysterious young lady comes up to him and gives him a magic box, which contains, of course, Gwyneth Paltrow's head. They toss the head back and forth, which eventually turns to guts. Now I could explain to you the deep meaning behind this scene, but, uh, I don't wanna. I mean... I know what it's supposed to represent. I'm a cinema snob. I just, uh, don't feel like sharing it. Feeling he has to stick his dick in something, Rob goes out and gets himself a prostitute. He even takes her to the set of every college film ever made. Things turn awkward, though, when Rob can't get it up. Luckily, killing her will help with that. How embarrassing. Killing the hooker costs an extra $20, and Rob only has a 10 and some change on him. You know, if she were alive, this would look like how all gothic first dates end. He wakes up the next day and is caught by the local groundskeeper. <laughs> This movie went from pretentious art film to violent shit fast. It's okay, though. The movie could turn itself around and become artsy again. And it does. Feeling that 75 minutes is a long enough runtime for the movie, Rob grabs a knife and commits suicide. All while a very fake penis shoots blood and semen out like it's a fucking fire hose. What? I can't show it, so I might as well awkwardly describe it. Plus, it shows us reverse footage of the same rabbit scene from earlier. And guess what? It still has no place here. It isn't cute. It isn't clever. It isn't hip. It isn't innovative. It has no purpose in being in this film, except to make the director look like a fucking asshole. After he passes, Rob is buried in quite a shallow grave, and all the corpses lived happily ever... Really? A cliffhanger? Are there that many unanswered questions? 
Well, I won't go so far as to say this has the most useless cliffhanger since Super Mario Brothers, because this movie actually does have a sequel. I don't really know what to make of this movie. The critic in me abhors the onslaught of exploitation, sex, and violence, but the snob in me loves any movie where the lead character runs happily in an open field with beautiful music playing behind it. Quite the conundrum. But with my track record, I guess 30 good minutes out of a full-length film isn't that bad. Also, I know the subtitles are fake. That's the joke. Hat gestunken wie Sau und sollte es auch noch von hinten. And I really don't feel the need to explain what happens to the rabbit. Come in. Hey. Oh! <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know you were recording. Um, Be gone, hairy neighbor. <laughs> I have no time for you right now. I am busy talking about corpse fucking. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, do, you, do you mind real quickly if I grab some bread? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. yeah, sorry. <laughs> Hi, internet people. <laughs>